Hello, I'm Phil Cutting, and I'd just like to talk to you for a few moments about packing up your delicate items ready for a removal. Lots of our customers like to do their own packing and we're fine with that, but sometimes we worry that their packing skills are not sufficient to prevent their delicate china and crystal from getting damaged in the move. So first of all, I'd like to talk to you about the paper and the boxes that we're using. We suggest you don't use newspaper because it makes everything very grubby. But this paper, which is called newsprint offcuts, can be bought from any trade packaging supplier. You can buy it online, whatever you like. Uh, the box is the same. They're standard uh, removal boxes and uh, we buy those from a trade outlet and you can do the same. And you'll get a much better price there than buying it from a, a local storage place on the high street. I'd also like to say that I don't normally sit down. Normally I stand up by the cupboard where I'm uh, packing and um, take the items straight out of the cupboard and wrap them and put them in the box. I don't get them out of the cupboard and put them on the table because that's double handling and uh, you're asking for trouble. Also, I'd just like to point out that uh, this uh, table has got a tablecloth on it to prevent the, any damage being given to that. And lastly, I'd just like to say that the box is the same height as me. I'm not constantly bending down on the floor to put items in the boxes. So let's make a start. Let's first of all look at this cup. Very delicate, very pretty. We notice that a lot of our customers simply wrap it with one sheet of paper and all the excess paper they tuck inside. And clearly there's just one skin of paper here and no protection against knocking against another cup that's beside it in the box. So what we suggest is that as you wrap the cup, you wrap it over and over, but crumple the paper as you go. So what you end up now is several layers of paper surrounding the cup, and there are small air pockets in there, so it gives it a, a really nice, uh, comfortable place for it to sit. And of course, since paper's cheap, you can always wrap it with another sheet. And of course, the, the saucer, you can do the same thing. Now let's move on to a piece of crystal. And here it's quite easy to see that there are two vulnerable areas here. You've got the, uh, the, the edge of the bowl and also the stem. And so those need careful attention to both areas. So what we suggest is that you take your paper and crumpling it as you wrap, you wrap the bowl separately. And then taking a second sheet of paper, you protect the stem. And then to keep the whole thing safe and tidy, we wrap it in a third sheet of paper. And now that's well protected, isn't it? But you know what? Paper's cheap. Let's put a fourth sheet round it. Now let's move on to something such as a, a teapot. First thing to say here is that we would not wrap the teapot with the lid on top. We take that off and wrap it separately so that they don't chip together. And secondly, you notice that you don't pick a teapot up by its handle because some teapots are very, very fragile and they might have a few cracks around the handle. If you use the handle, the teapot pot might fall away and, and get damaged. So the handle is vulnerable and so is the spout. So again, we'd wrap those with separate sheets of paper. Crumpling as we go. And then, to keep it all together, Sheet. And let's face it, let's put another sheet on. And then that's well protected there and we can put it inside the box. Just like to say we don't normally pack heavy things like china and delicate things like crystal in the same box together. We like to keep the light things and the heavy things separate. I'm going to conclude by showing you how we pack plates. 
and uh, plates we pack in a slightly different way in that we take the first plate wrap that with a nice cushion there that we can put the second plate on again wrap that a third and finally the fourth Lastly, we turn it over, put another piece around, and that's nice and substantial. We never pack more than four plates together, sometimes less. If they're large plates, we'll, we'll not pack four, we'll just do, do them individually even. But we always stand them in the box vertically, and if you stand them in the vertically, that's the strongest plane, and it makes sure that they travel safely through the removal process. So there we have it, just a simple guide to how to do your packaging. And if you can remember those principles, you'll be able to make sure that at the end of the day, when you unwrap your delightful things at the end of the move, that they look just as lovely as they did when you first put them in the box.